Hello guys, today I want to talk about some important changes that were made in Laravel 9.19 related to building the front-end assets. The asset builder was replaced from Laravel Mix to Veet. And in this video I want to tell you why it was made, how does it work, and what to do if it doesn't work, and everything around it. So first, what exactly changed? When you install new Laravel project now with Laravel new installer for example, you will not find the file of webpack mix.js anymore. So the installation is finished. And if we cd to the project and then list the files, we don't see webpack mix.js. Instead, we see vite config.js. So to compile front end assets from resources.js and resources CSS, you used to run npm install and npm run dev and then wait for everything to compile. With Veed, it would be almost the same commands that you would run, but it would run much faster. And that's the whole reason why that change was made, because of the speed of bundling, which means developers don't have to wait for compiling to finish in the background. Let me demonstrate it. The best way to demonstrate the speed and the difference is provided by Taylor Otwell. You just install Laravel Breeze with Vue.js version of that Laravel Breeze, and then we will do some magic. So we already installed the Laravel and then we do compose require breeze. Then we install the breeze with Vue.js like this. It installs inertia Laravel, so it uses inertia view. And then we need to run the same npm install and npm run dev. So npm install and npm run dev with webpack used to just finish the command and compile the public JS app JS and public CSS app CSS. Have some warnings here, but they don't really matter in this case. Let's run npm run dev and see what happens. npm run dev with Vite starts the server, so called Vite server, on a separate local host 3000, but you don't need to know about that. Your app URL stays the same, and when we launch that, you have your Laravel project. So there's nothing really different that much, right? But the difference is if you change something in your Vue.js files, people used to run npm run watch to watch for the changes or rerun npm run dev every time the change happens. Now, let me show you what happens if I change something with Vite. So I open a random view component, welcome view, which is the homepage, this thing, and let's actually zoom it in. And then let's change something, the text, any random thing. So for example, Laravel has wonderful thorough documentation. Let's add the word framework, for example. I hit save in PHP Storm. I come back to the browser. And as you can see, the text is already reloaded. So I didn't refresh the browser myself manually. What happened in the background? Vite server starts to run and it continues running, watching for the changes. In this video, I won't really explain how it works because it's a separate course almost, but what you need to know, it's much faster and it's reloaded almost instantly, including reload of the browser instantly. So you don't need to even think about NPM running something. It's similar to good old PHP backend coding where you just save the file and it works. It's actually even better. You don't need to reload the browser. It's already reloaded. So that's the reason why Vite is better and why it was chosen to be the default front-end asset builder instead of Laravel Mix. And after the change was released, people started reporting their times of how it was improving the building time, local or production. So for example, in this tweet, 12 minutes to five minutes, so almost twice as fast, or in fact, more than twice as fast. That's pretty huge improvement. Now, how does it actually work? and what you need to know for new Laravel projects. The actual change during Laravel installation is all mostly in one commit, which I will link in the description below. It replaces Webpack with Vite. And here are the changes that have been made to Laravel framework. A few .env.example values, so from mix to Vite, related to pusher. In a majority of cases, you don't even think about that. Then public build is git ignored now. Then style CI, also, if you use that, it is replaced, then this is important. So instead of all those commands like npm run prod, npm run hot, and others, you have two, npm run dev and npm run build. So dev is for your local and build is to build the actual production CSS and JS. 
then it replaces Laravel Mix with Laravel Vite plugin and Vite itself. So dependencies in package JSON, resources JS Bootstrap is the same using env files, values, and then this is new Vite config, which replaces old Webpack Mix.js. So not too many changes in terms of Laravel project, but the change is how it works under the hood when you run npm run dev. Now, what to do if Vite doesn't work for you as smoothly as in my demo? I've seen on Twitter people reporting some issues on their specific project or on their specific operating systems or on their specific setups. For example, this morning I saw this tweet that Laravel Breeze with Vite using Laravel Sale doesn't work and you need to know that npm run dev should be loaded outside of sale for it to work. Otherwise, it doesn't load the front end assets. So that's one example. Another example that Vite wouldn't work with Laravel UI. So they updated the official starter kits of Breeze and Jetstream. But Laravel UI, although it is still maintained and working, was kind of forgotten, not sure intentionally or not, at the time of that switch. So that wouldn't work and maybe you would like to get back to Webpack instead. And by the way, with Laravel UI, they are working on the fix. So there is a pull request for Vite for Laravel UI. So it will be fixed maybe even by the time this video is out. But whatever problem you have, or maybe you don't like Vite, how it works, if you want to get back to Webpack JS, Webpack Mix JS and Laravel Mix, you just need to go through that commit again and roll back all the changes from here. And then you would be using Webpack like you did all the time and nothing would be changed for you. Now, what about if you have old project with Laravel Mix and you want to migrate to Vite? There is an article on Laravel News compiling other articles related to that. So there is Laravel Shift Converter, which is free, by the way. Laravel Shift itself, if you want to upgrade Laravel versions, is not free. But Mix to Vite Converter specifically is free, so you can try it out. Also, you can read the official migration guide. Also, Christoph Rumpel wrote a tutorial. And there are a few more tutorials, like for example, with Bootstrap or with specifically Laravel Valet. So I will link that article in the description as well. Probably the main thing is the migration guide. So if we click that, we land on readme file on GitHub migrating from Mix to Vite. And there's a step-by-step -step guide, how to do the same thing manually, what to update and stuff like that. Also, related links are summarized in the official Taylor's tweet announcing the Vite change, which also includes the entirely new docs page of Laravel.com about front-end in general. So you can read that in full and also specific Vite page on Laravel docs. So if we click that, we land bundling assets Vite. Here you can read on how Vite works with Laravel specifically. And of course, you can go to the official documentation of Vite itself, how it works in general. So I hope this video clarifies what was changed and what you need to do, if anything, for new upcoming Laravel projects. If something doesn't work for you with Vite, I recommend you post to Laracast forum. There are a lot of helpful people and someone will help. What do you think about that new change? It seems pretty drastic, but it actually isn't that big and a better tool, a faster tool is chosen for the future of Laravel front-end assets bundling. The only downside for me personally as a course creator and content creator, I have to reshoot a few videos. So for example, for the course of React.js plus Laravel and Vue.js plus Laravel, I need to show how to compile the assets with Vite now. So next thing I'm going to do in a few days, I will reshoot a few videos there to upgrade those courses. And also in 2022, hopefully over the summer, I want to reshoot a few more courses in full a few courses which are pretty old. So Eloquent Expert Level, it was published with Laravel 5.7 and Eloquent is fundamental part of Laravel so everyone needs to know about that. So I'll upgrade that course in full. And also another course, PHP Unit in Laravel. It was kind of introductory course for testing in Laravel. A lot of things have changed since then, since Laravel's 5.8 version, including PEST and other testing functionality. So I'm planning to reshoot that course in full hopefully by the end of the summer. If you want to get that, the best way to do that is to subscribe to yearly membership of my courses. And by doing that, you also support this YouTube channel, which continues to be free with daily videos. That's it for now. And see you guys in those other daily videos.